name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. A few weeks we passed through um, without talking about our series of uh, the priesthood and the ordination of the patriarch uh, due to uh, the weather and so on. And thank God we passed this. Now come, we come back to the ordination of the patriarch. We spoke about the night or the eve of the ordination itself and what's going on during it. And then we spoke, I remember last time we spoke about how he enters the candidate for the papacy, how he enters the church, and it's called the great entrance. They close the doors of the church, they give him the key, and he has to open saying one of the verses of the psalm, uh, open for me the door of righteousness. And he enters with great splendor. And we reach the point that he is in front of the sanctuary. And we said that uh, all the readings were read except the gospel, because the gospel, he has to read it. So now he is in front of the sanctuary. Then the archbishop or the elder of the bishops or the metropolitans, he has to hand over the recommendation, what's, what we call the recommendation. We're going to go through it tonight. And this recommendation is signed by all the metropolitans and bishops and all the members of the Holy Synod. And he hands this over to one of the archdeacon to read it on the pulpit. Nowadays, we saw in the ordination of Pope Tawadros that the metropolitans and bishops read it now. And the text of this recommendation is unique. I'm going to fast go through it. But for us to understand some points in it. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, the inseparable Holy Trinity, one God, our Lord, we, the Orthodox Christians, we rely on him to the last breath and send to him on high glory and honor forever. We, the metropolitans and bishops and priests and deacons and the entire congregation who love Christ, in, this, in the cities of Alexandria, Cairo, and all the province of Egypt, after we were stricken by the affliction of the orphanhood, by the passing away of his holiness pope, and they say the name of the last pope, to the heavenly paradise, who gained all the holy promises and passed to God who loved him. So he heard the joyful voice saying, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. When we were orphaned and the holy church of God, which he shepherded by his teaching, was widowed, we supplicated to God to lead us to a person worthy of the great leadership of priesthood to shepherd us into the way of the Lord and guide us to the harbor of salvation. So by heavenly love and the Holy Spirit's work, we all agreed in good heart to elect the worshiper of God from the monks of the monastery of Saint so-and-so the monastery of the person who comes to be a pope. We elect from the monks of the monastery of so-and-so a pope and patriarch and ruler of bishops for the apostolic see of St. Mark the Evangelist, preacher of Egypt, Ethiopia, Nubia, Sudan, and five western cities, Pentapolis, and all the provinces of St. Mark preaching in Africa, Asia, Europe, America, and Australia, we selected him because he worships God, loves strangers, with understanding and knowledge, 
pure, perseveres on keeping the church rights, faith, dogma, and tradition. And we present him as a ruling pastor, pope, and patriarch for holy house of God to shepherd it with meekness and compassion. That is why we wrote this recommendation. We have signed it with gratitude to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I'm not going to delve deeply in the meaning of the recommendation itself, but it showed you how the church, or how specifically the metropolitans and the bishops, choose the person to be a pope. It's not merely, you know, they heard about someone. The history of the church tells us that they have to go and spend days and maybe months with the person they heard about that he is good or fit for this position. And ask his father of confession, of course, and ask uh, his fellow monks if he is from the monks. And be sure that he really deserves to be the Pope of the church. Again, you, you notice here that there are several points that they have to have in this person. We selected him because he worships God. Truly worship God. Not, I'm sorry to say, fake worship. But truly, from the heart, he worships God. Loves strangers. Means he is gracious. He is, he is welcoming everybody and anyone. With understanding and knowledge. That does not contradict with simplicity. Sometimes we think a simple person is not a knowledgeable person. But remember, knowledge of God is given from God. That doesn't mean also that we leave the books and the tradition of the church, no. But both of them are important. Both of them are necessary for the salvation of this person and the whole congregation. Pure. As a person, he is pure. Perseveres on keeping the church rights. Nowadays, we see this war that raged against the tradition and the rights of the church. We see the people from outside the church, they want to change the rights of our church. Well, let them try. This church has been there for 2,000 years, and nobody can change. Faith. He has to persevere on keeping faith. And we see this with every single pope and patriarch of Alexandria or the Coptic Church. He perseveres. We saw this with Pope Shenouda. We saw this with Pope Krollos. And we see it now with Pope Tawadros. That he perseveres. Do whatever he can. Everything he can. To keep the faith. The dogma. Dogma, what, what we believe in. And the tradition. Some people say, only what we have in the Bible and that's it. My beloved, you have to understand that the church, the first church, began without any written Bible. So he, who, who keeps the information, the knowledge in the church, it was the tradition. And it was verbally from person to person until it reached to someone who wrote it down. Or they saw it is necessary to write it down. So actually tradition 
was before even written the, the written Holy Bible. So it's important. And it's part of the knowledge that this person, the Pope, has to persevere in keeping. Then the Metropolitans and Bishops stand before the sanctuary for the ordination of the Patriarch. After they read this on him, recommendation, so the elected person kneels on his knees. And the Archbishop prays the Thanksgiving prayer, raises, raising of incense, and says this prayer, a small prayer. O Lord God of hosts who qualified us for this holy service, we approach you and supplicate to you to grant the grace of the high leadership of priesthood to your servant who is standing before you here awaiting your heavenly gifts. Ordination, it is not mere, you know, things that we do in the church in front of people to people for people to be happy with it. No, it's awaiting the gifts from heaven to descend on this person, a special gift. We hear about the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, right? Love, peace, and so on and so forth. But there is a special gift for the person who is ordained. The Archbishop says his, this prayer, O Master Lord, God upon to Krator, Lord of all, grant your servant grace, Grant him wisdom to shepherd your church purely in justice, dominion, and honor due to you. Then the archbishop places his hand on the chosen candidate in one case, if he is a hegumen. As we said before, the person who are, I mean, sorry, the, per, the person who is to be a pope, he can be a monk, and he has to be a hegumen, monk, or a general bishop. So if he is a Hugemin monk, then the archbishop has to put his hand on him, laying of hands. If you read the, the, the book of Acts, laying of hands. But if he is a bishop, then the archbishop will not put his hand because he already has the laying of hands before. The RG can says the decl this, this declaration, the divine grace that heals sickness and accomplished deficiencies and gathers the scattered, led us to know the worshiper of God to present him Pope and Patriarch for the two cities of Cairo and Alexandria and all the provinces of Egypt and all the areas preached by Saint Mark. And instead of the late blessed who passed away in this in blessed age and left to God, let us pray then, begging the Lord of grace to dwell on him, the grace of the Holy Spirit, and let us all say, Lord have mercy, Kyrie and then the chanter say the same, Kyrie Then the Archbishop places his hand on the chosen candidate head, if he is a Higumen, as we said before, saying, Yes, Lord, make him worthy for the call of high priestly leadership to become worthy to pastor your congregation with purity and righteousness to win the share of the saints by the mercy of your son jesus christ our lord blessed are you with him and the holy spirit then the archdeacon says stand well stand in purity stand in reverence and quietness and let us all say lord have mercy why you have to stand because this is the the moment that the heavenly gift from the Holy Spirit will descend upon this person. So it's a very honor, honored moment. Then the Archdeacon says, come on gathering metropolitans and bishops and place your hands on our Father chosen by God, of course, if he's a Gehugman, or pray for our Father chosen by God if he's a bishop without laying hands. So if he was a hegumen, a monk, the metropolitans and bishops, are, of course, they are a lot. We have a hundred something. So how they lay hand on him. If, if he is a hegumen, the metropolitans and bishops place their hands on his shoulders, arms, and the archbishop places his right hand on his head. 
You imagine the picture? So if he's a person here, come. Supposingly, this is the person that will be a pope. Hopefully. So the archbishop, of course, he stand in front of the sanctuary facing east. So the archbishop will put his hand on the head. What about the other bishops around? They put on the shoulders and arms from this side and this side. Okay? So all of them lay their hands on him. That's in one condition. If he is a monk, not a bishop. Type. If he is a bishop, what, what should happen? If the chosen candidate is a bishop who has already laid hands on, then the metropolitans and bishops stand around him without laying on hands. They don't touch him. Even the archbishop does not lay hands on him. Why? Because he is already a bishop and he has the laying of hands already performed before in his, you know, being a bishop. So now they just declare him to be the pope. It's not ordination, it is declaration that he becomes the pope. Thank you. Then the leader of the Metropolitans prays this prayer of ordination. And, and please listen to this prayer, it's very important also. O Master Lord, God of all, source of all compassion, we ask and treat your goodness, O Philanthropic One, for your servant, and he say his name, whom you chose a high priest for your church to become ruler over your congregation and a pastor for them. Shine on him. Lord, by the light of your countenance, to enlighten his heart by the spring of your glory to know your holy mysteries. Pour on him the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the spirit of perfect comfort, whom you gave to your saintly apostles and pure prophets. Lord, grant him the spirit of wisdom, understanding, power, and counsel, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, God fill him with your face, with, sorry, with your fear to judge your congregation with justice and defend the true orthodox faith. Notice here that the church is directing our attention to the importance of keeping the orthodox faith, defending. Adorn him by the vestment of your holy glory and place crown on his head and anoint him by the oil of joy of your goodness to become your high priest, faithful over your house to glorify you without blame all the days of his life. By pure sacrifices and faultless prayers and a bright spirit, by fasts and good deeds, love, meekness, faith without hypocrisy, and offers oblations for the ignorance of your congregation and rescue them from the traps of sin and return them to your holy fold. God grant your congregation peace and grant your servant the spirit of your holiness to undo every bond of the enemy and gather the children of the church to become one flock for, uh, for one pastor and keep his priesthood blameless to the end to serve you by spiritual sacrifices at all times like the rank of the great high priest in heaven, Jesus Christ our Lord, glory and dominion due to him. We notice here but this is a very important prayer. It includes the responsibilities or all the responsibilities of the patriarch. Let us count the responsibilities of the patriarch. Please count with me. Spiritual rulers of the congregation. That's number? One. Very good. Now you know numbers. So spiritual rulers of the congregation. Pastor of pastors, number two. Judge the congregation in justice and uprightness. So he is a judge. That's number three. Protector of the true orthodox faith against heresies and deviations. That's number four. Offers oblation and prayers to intercede for the congregation before God. Five. So he is an intercessor. Rescues sinners from fire of sin and evil. Number? Six. 
Return the lost to the holy yard of faith. That's number? So he is a good shepherd, right? Works and prayers for the salvation of the congregation. Number? Gathers the scattered children of God to one. Gives absolution and forgiveness to all repentance. Who are tied by the devil, by sin, and its horrific bonds. So we discover that in the prayer itself, we are telling the person who, who will become a, a pope, that is your responsibility is, is to do one, two, three, through ten. Let us say them again. Can we say them again? Okay. You, you count, and then I say the, the responsibility. Huh? Number? One. Spiritual ruler of the congregation. Two. Pastor of pastors. Three. Judges the congregation in justice and uprightness. Four. Protector of the true Orthodox faith against heresies and deviations. Five. Offers oblation and prayers. Six. Rescue sinners. Seven. Return the lost. Words and praise for the salvation of the congregation. Nine. Gather the scattered. Ten. Gives absolution and forgiveness to all repentance. That, that's it. <laughs> so ten, 10 responsibilities. That's good because, because I see you coming to sleep. So I just want to wake you up. Then, then what happened? So they, they pray this prayer and he hears everything by the way. And he knows that this is for him, this prayer is for him, to, to know exactly what he should do. What is the work that I'm going to do? The leading metropolitan faces west, praying, Lord, look upon us and upon your service. Purify us from all blemish and send your grace, leadership of priesthood to your servant, to be worthy to please you and shepherd your congregation without blame, because you are merciful and righteous. Glory to you. Then he turns his face and faces west towards the chosen candidate and signs him his forehead by the thumb. By the thumb. If he was a hegemon, now, now we have two rights. If he's a hegemon, monk, if he's a bishop. So if he's a hegemon, if he's a monk, then he signs his forehead with his thumb saying, we call you Amba, and then his name, Pope and Patriarch and Leader of Bishops of the See of St. Mark. Likewise, he says, the three signs, blessed be God the Pantocrator, and the, uh, 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 the, the, his only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, and the chanters say, Amen, every time. If he's a bishop, if he's a bishop, he pronounced this without the thumb, without the cross, without his hand on his head. By these three signs and pronunciation of being a pope, this person become a pope, the ordination is accomplished, actually. And the chosen candidate becomes the pope of Alexandria and patriarch of the see of St. Mark by the dwelling of the Holy Spirit upon him. But is it finished? No. You remember that the gospel is not read yet. And he has to read the gospel. So there is a litany of the gospel, and then he reads the gospel. Next time we're going to speak about what's after this. But now we, we take the core of the ordination itself, and we know the difference between ordaining a monk to become a pope, or pronouncing a bishop to be the pope or the patriarch or the archbishop. Okay? How many responsibilities we went through? Very good. Do you remember any of them?